Hey, hey, my friends. Welcome to your weekly dose of LinkedIn Lunch with Jen. So good to catch up with you guys. Sorry I missed you last week. I was busy at the Silicon Slopes Summit here in Utah. And um, if you're curious about all the good stuff and interesting companies and different topics, you can definitely go back and look at my feed in LinkedIn to see what it was that I was talking about. I was reporting on a number of the different speakers and about the key takeaways that I had from um, the different things that they were talking about. So it was pretty awesome. There were some really interesting people that were there. Um, it was kind of fun to hear about some things like cryptocurrency um, or how technology is helping in the healthcare sector, different things about like engagement and workplace and whatnot. So some really fun stuff there. So go ahead and check that out. Again, that's on my LinkedIn profile. You can just do a, um, a search for hashtag Silicon Slopes or hashtag Silicon Slopes Summit. You'll see that there. So today on our lunch with Jen, we are talking about mindset and how that ties into service. And um, the reason why I wanted to talk about this is because it's really interesting and it's amazing how we can really accomplish and change our mindset to be more focused on being of service to others and how that literally changes our mindset. It's true. Like when we have this perspective of I want to be of service to this person, it shifts us. It makes a big difference. In fact, if you wanna try something very simple in your life, the next time you're going somewhere and you're walking into a place, like let's say you're walking into the gas station or a restaurant or some kind of place of business where they, where they have the doors where you have to actually hold the door open, notice who's around you and see if you can open the door when that person is coming by and they're needing to either leave as like, let's say you're going into the grocery store and they're coming out or, or vice versa. Right. And just notice what happens when you hold the door for the person. And when you do it, look them in the eye and smile. <laughs> just take a quick little second to do this. You don't have to sit there and chit chat and engage in a big long conversation. Right. And, um, and it might be weird if you're holding the door and they're like 25 feet into the store still, right? Like that might be a little creepy, a little bit weird. Okay. So maybe don't do that, but if they're fairly close to it, just hold the door and just smile at them. Right. And sometimes we'll hold the door for people and we don't even really like engage with each other a lot. Right. Or they might say thanks kind of underneath their, you know, underneath their, kind of quietly with their voice, right? Um, but see what you can do to actually engage with that person for a second. So the thing that's happening in that moment is you're still being of service. You're still holding the door for them, right? You're still making, um, an op taking an opportunity, I should say, to connect with somebody, right? And more often than not, they're going to be a complete stranger. Um, but the difference is when you lock eyes with somebody and you smile, it can really change what happens inside your heart and what's going on for them as well with that whole experience. So again, a little bit of an experiment, social experiment, see how that goes for you and notice what happens to you inside your heart and how that makes you feel, okay? Because that can really um, add to this whole experience um, around, around being of service, excuse me. So I want to share with you a quote from Og Mandino. And if you do not know the famous Og, he is now passed away, but Og wrote some amazing books about what we can do um, to really connect with people and to grow. One of my favorite books that he wrote is called, um, it's about being the world, oh, let me grab it here. It's the greatest salesman in the world. Wonderful book. And you might be saying, Jen, seriously, I'm in tech, <laughs> like I do, I'm not in sales. I leave that to the sales team, right? Well, just a thought for you is that this book isn't about selling stuff necessarily. It has, um, there's a lot about learning to connect with people and paying attention to your intentionality. But this is from the famous Og Mandino, great book. Um, but there's a quote that he says, 
always render more and better service than is expected of you, no matter what your task may be. And so I love that thought because you have a task, right? You've accepted, you've agreed to and say, yeah, I'm going to get this thing done, right? We're going to deliver this project, take care of whatever this feature is. We're going to launch this, whatever that might be. But I would love for you to stop and think about from improving your mindset. What can you do to have that add that service piece of it that could possibly really help you to make a difference in the long run of you, not only for yourself, but also for your people that work for you or with you. And then also all of those um, ripple effect opportunities for your internal and then your external customers as well. So have that service mindset. Um, I want to share with you a story around um, what I call the red boat story. And I don't even remember how this showed up on my radar. I think it might've been a post on Facebook. I think, um, but it was on social media. If it wasn't Facebook, it might have been LinkedIn. But this was a, this was a while ago. And what I love about this story is that this gentleman had a red boat that needed to be painted. Because you know what happens with boats, right? You put them in the water, and over time, the water kind of erodes and makes some of the the paint. Um, can either dull it or can flake it and can break away or, or whatever. And so um, what is so cool about this story is this gentleman has this boat and he needs it to be painted and be improved so it looks good. And he has the money to do that, okay? He doesn't have a lot of time to do it because he's quite busy taking care of his business. But he's got some money, so he decides to hire somebody who's a local a local painter in his community, in his village. And they, um, so they pull the boat out. He says, okay, please paint the boat, okay? And that's what the painter said, absolutely, I'm happy to paint the boat. They've got the paint there. The owner leaves, and while the painter is there, and he's, he's stripping away any flaky old stuff, making sure that the boat's nice and dry, he's leaving it out for several days, just wanted to make sure things were really dry before he puts on a new coat of paint. And as he's inspecting the boat, he notices that there's a crack in part of the hole. And this is a type of boat, like don't think like, you know, enormous ship or yacht or something like that. Like, this is a boat that imagine a couple of people could sit in, like about three to four people max, they can sit in it on the benches and, the, and to go out and go do some fishing. And so he's looking at the bottom, he's got the boat flipped upside down. It's there, it's on the dock, he's working on it. And he notices that there's this crack that um, needs to be sealed. And the painter thinks to himself, well, let's go ahead, let's seal this up. Let's make sure that it's really good. So this has a nice smooth surface. So when we put the paint on it, it'll be protected. And so he takes care and he, he fills in the crack and all the bit and the boat stays there for a few more days to make sure it's really, really dried. And then he finishes up his job and, um, and then the owner comes to him about a week later to pay him for the, for the work. And the painter, uh, he was told originally a certain amount of money. That's what he was expecting to do. Did everything he possibly could to, you know, take care of it. Well, the owner comes and he gives him 10 times more money than what they had originally agreed to. The painter said, oh, no, 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 you're, you're overpaying me. I, this isn't what we agreed upon. We agreed upon this other thing over here. And, he, and the owner says, you don't understand. I need to pay you more money because when you painted the boat, you actually helped to save the lives of my children. And the painter said, what? I, I just painted the boat. And the owner said, no, actually you fixed a crack that was in the boat. And if that crack hadn't been fixed, my children had been out on the water, they had been fishing, and the boat would have sunk and they would have died. But because you went the extra mile and you did more than just simply put another coat of paint on, you filled in that crack and you protected my kids and my kids, my family is everything to me. And that's why I wanna pay you even more than what you had agreed upon. 
So the moral of that story is the mindset of this painter was, I'm going to take care of this boat. I'm going to paint it red. We're going to make it nice. We're going to give it nice, fresh, you know, and as he was going along, he noticed something that needed to be done and he went the extra mile and he painted uh, or before painting it, he filled in that crack. He crack and made sure it was all patched and taken care of. And, um, and, and so think about that for yourself, right? When you agree to paint a boat red, are you looking for other opportunities to maybe fix things along the way as you go? And in this story, the painter got paid more money, right? You may not necessarily get literally paid more cash to do another job, okay? However, the painter got paid long before he got paid that extra money, okay? He got paid in knowing that he was doing what was right, that he was slowing down, paid attention, looked for things that he could take care of, sealed it, did it without being asked, made it better, and then in the end, the boat was in a better situation to take care of that family, right, and to, and to protect those kids while they were out fishing. And so think about that for yourself. What's showing up in your life? What are maybe some things that are crossing your path that is there an opportunity to, for you to fill in some of those cracks and to make a difference? And so as we're wrapping up today's conversation, I want to leave you with this particular question. What is something that's going on in your life where you've been paid to paint the boat that maybe you can stop and look to see, is there something where you might be able to find a crack and to fill it in before you paint the boat? Something like that in your life. So what is that? Add that to the, to the chat here. Let's talk about what it is that's going on and talk about what are those opportunities that might be out there so that you can do what you can do to paint the boat in the best possible way for you. And then think about how that ties back to your personal brand and how that can make a huge difference in the long run for how you're leading your teams and how you're making a difference for them. All right, my friends, thank you so much for joining me on today's LinkedIn Lunch with Jen. I'm going to go back and finish my lunch. I've got um, baked uh, chicken drumsticks and a yummy squash casserole. Thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you next time on Lunch with Jen. Thanks.